Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Visio. In this module, I want to look at how you can create your own room plan, design your own room. So first of all, I've clicked on new and I've got all these different options at the top and the categories and so on at the bottom. I want to pick a home plan, this one. So it's not always there, it could be in one of these categories or it isn't in one of these categories, but I've got it there because I've recently been in it. So I'm just gonna click on that one and then create. So what you get down the left hand side is a series of stencils. It starts off with wall and shell and structure. That's what we're going to start off with. But there are other stencils there and you've got the option to search for shapes if you can't find what you're looking for in this list of stencils. Just go up through those so you can see there's quite a few. Lots and lots of bits and bobs. We'll use some of those but not all of them. Now, you've also got the option to bring in a stencil from another template. If you know there's certain shapes that you want, but they are in a different template, you don't have to search for them and then keep searching for them. You can bring the whole stencil in through this feature here, more shapes. But we'll start off with this one, and we want to create a room layout. Now, you've got some options here. You've got a room. You've got a T-shaped room and an L-shaped room or to spaces or walls that you can do yourself. So I'll just show you, basically, if you bring the room on, what you get there is, a, it looks quite small, but it's it's 3 metres by 2.5 metres. Now, what I recommend you do is go to, go to the View tab and select the Task Pane's size and position. Because that tells you what the size of the room is. So let's say that we wanted a five meter by four meter room just to make it a little bit bigger obviously you'd have to measure your room accurately so you know what size it is now it's still quite small so i need to zoom in on this so you can see it so i'll just come make it a lot bigger and then just go back and find it there is another view i could put on there that would find this so there we have our room now if you bring in the l-shaped room for example you get the same features if i do four by uh, five by four Again, you can see that how that works out. And when you click on it, you get all these other dimensions, which you can then adjust. So if I wanted to make that a bit wider, say I wanted to make it um, two meters, I went past it there, two meters, and I want that to be a bit deeper. And you can just play around with those measurements as you need to do for your own building. I'm just going to delete that one because I don't really want to do that one. If you want to bring in, I'm going to move this across a little bit. If you want to bring in a wall and do this manually, you can do that as well. So I can just bring these wall it, wall elements in and they will snap together as you set them up. And you can basically draw any shape or design any shape you need to. Let's get that to snap in there. And each element's got its own little measurement, as you can see. I'll leave that one at three meters because that's exactly what that one was. And I'll spin this round. So it joins on it there, it comes round like so. And now you can see I've got a bit of a misalignment there. So I need that to be horizontal, so that's horizontal, and then I can snap that into position. Now what I need to put on the screen is, if I go to, I'm on the view tab, I need the grid on. Just to help you a bit with lining things up, and then you can carry on bringing these things in as I was already. So I'll just snap that one onto position. And at the moment, I'm just roughly doing this. Uh, obviously, you would have to be a lot more careful than I am. So that's all snapped into position. And then you can start bringing in your other elements like the door, the front door. Let's say there's a front door there. That will snap into position. And then this little yellow circle you can move to open inwards. And then let's have a window. Windows default at 0.9 metres, 900 centimetres. Uh, 90 centimeters, 900 millimeters. Let's put a bigger window in there. So let's have that at say two meters. Now, if you find it hard, two meters is too big. Let's go for 1400. Remember, if you've got this open, you can just type it in there. So if I wanted that to be a meter, I can just put that one M or type a thousand. It's totally up to you how you do it, but basically that's what that is. And then we'll have another window in there at the end. Just push that into the end there and it'll snap into place. It can be a similar sort of size. Now, I want a wall down here, so let's get another wall. And then 
we'll snap that into position and that can be the hallway get it to be horizontal uh, we need a door in there so it's a house full of doors at the minute and that needs to open inwards and I need to push that up a little bit I think so click on that and then move that up a bit so if you wanted to you don't have to have the door that way you can have it opening this way you know you can flip shapes if I just go into position you got rotate shapes so I can rotate 90 no and I want to flip that way that's it so now it opens that way gives you a bit more space otherwise you're banging into everything so we've got all the information we want now. I need a set of stairs here. So there are some core, building core gives you a straight staircase. It's not a brilliant um, set of stairs, but you can you can see how it works. You can just spin that round just to indicate that you've got stairs there. And then put them into where they need to go. They probably need to be a lot shorter than that. down to there, shouldn't have moved that bit, move it onto there and move that bit onto there, that's just the, uh, the rails, so the rails just need to sit on top. Okay, and then the measurements, again you would have to create the measurements, now I haven't got any measurement tools set up yet but I'll show you that in a second. Now this is where it looks okay at the minute but then as soon as you start bringing furniture in that is at a set size, you start having problems, so if we go for furniture what you've got is some basic stuff here, but for example, this sofa, when I start putting that in here, now I've, there's absolutely no space for that to go in anywhere, unless I put it on this back wall. So if I rotate that on the back wall, let's see what that looks like. So that actually will fit there, so if I just stick that right in the corner, just inside a little bit, that'll do. Move it across, come forward a bit. Okay, so... If this chair's out, you've got a bit of a problem there. There's not much of a gap. Now, also, where are you going to put your TV? I haven't got a TV there. Um, I'm going to search for a TV. TV. Search for it. Flat screen TV. Where can I put that? Um, now, I would want to put that in front of this. So, this window's in the, in the, in the way. So, I can't really put it anywhere. I don't want to put it there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on this wall. Spin that round because it's a back to front. And what I need to do now is put a, a settee there, maybe move this around. And then you can see how, how when you've got a set structure, that it's very hard to position everything. So if I put that like that, the chair is against that wall. And it's now looking at the TV, which is what you'd want. Like so, and you're looking out the window. That's all right, and you wouldn't normally have that up there. So if I want to get myself back to the stencil, I need to close this off. So I'll close this off and I'll get a circular table. Now this is absolutely huge. So I'm going to change this down to half the size, 600 by 600. When you buy a table, obviously you'll have the set size. Now where am I going to put that? Probably in the corner there. And then I can put a plant on that maybe. I'll just type. There are plants in this one, but if I just put um, search for plant, see what comes up. Um, palm plant, that's a bit big, but I'll stick that in there. There we go, we've got a little plant. So we've got everything, we've got the windows, we've got the door, we've got the stairs, we've got a bit of furniture, we've got a TV, and there's a big space here where I've got anything, so I can put some more furniture in there if I find something useful. Um, another chair maybe, see how big that is, a recliner. Yeah, I'll put that there. And you can't really see the television from there, but it doesn't really matter. And then this space is just an empty space as well. Now what is always advisable to do is when you're positioning things like this is to create what's called a layer to lock it into position. For example, if I put electrical sockets and stuff like that in there, so if I put a sign for a switch, so there's an electrical switch there, and if I put a socket there, we've got a socket and a switch. What I don't want to happen is for this wall to move and then everything to have to be repositioned manually again. You might have more than one socket and one switch there. I'll just put another one over the other side. Because normally you have a few, don't you? So that's electrical switches. So I'm going to highlight all of this. 
once I've highlighted it, I want to create a layer. So I'm going into layer and assign to layer. This, all these are layers. These shapes that I brought on are layers, but I want to create a new one. I'm just going to call it Sax. OK, and then OK to that. And then I want to go to layer properties, layer properties, find Sax and lock it. So when I lock this, everything that's assigned to that, which is all these shapes, should not move. If I click OK to that, I can't actually click on any of these now. So you don't um, assign layers unless you're ready to sign a layer. You could have done it just for the walls and the windows and things like that. But now you can start bringing things on top of that, more things on top of that if you want. And these will not be part of that layer, but they are going to be in this building block or in this room if you like like so and then that's not part of the layer so I can still move that around I can't move this around unless I go and unlock that layer through layer properties and move it move things about so that's basically how you can create a room and add shapes to it now measurements if I want to put measurements on it you've got these options here so I mean um, drawing tool shapes and measuring tool this is quite cool so stick that there and pull that across to the end. It tells me what the measurement is for that room. And I can copy that. Just do Control D, which will copy it or drag it again. And then I can position that at the top and on that one. So this will actually print off because when you click on this, I can't click on it at the minute because I've, I've actually clicked out of it and done a layer. But normally when you click on it, it does tell you the measurements. That doesn't print off, but this will print off. And obviously I've got I've gone over a little bit here, but you can see how that works. If I do control, click on this again and do control D, which is just duplicate, you can then position these wherever you want them to go. So people have got an idea of what the measurements are. Snap to grid. And you can actually type in the measurement that you want it to be in here. As, as you can with all these shapes and then if I just do control D again to get another one going a bit mad here you can you can stick one on the outside edge there snap it to the grid uh, to the shape and then you get the measurement there and then another one for that bit there same thing you can do in the middle you can do raw uh, room space shape space you can put it in there but I would just suggest you don't get too complicated with all this it's just a rough design uh, a builder will come in with the proper plan planning tool and this is you giving a builder an idea of what you're after. Um, I did it when I got my garage converted and I didn't do the measurements, which is a bit of a shame because now I've got a gap in the and the door doesn't fit. So it's just an open space. But that I didn't expect the builder to use my diagram exactly as it was. But he did. He copied the Visio diagram uh, exactly and did the measurements that were on the Visio diagram. So consequently, I didn't have enough space for a door frame. So I haven't got a door in the middle of the room. It doesn't matter. It works okay. But that's all I wanted to show you in this little exercise. Hopefully that was of use. Thank you for your time and I'll see you on the next one.